Good morning. We're glad you've joined us for the Sunday morning service of Tusculum Hills Baptist Church, a caring and vibrant church that offers God's help to all people. We invite you to join us now for a special message from God's Word from Pastor Paul Gunn. Turning your Bibles to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, I want to share with you just for a few minutes about Abraham's pleas for God's mercy. I'll be reading from verses 16 through 32. I'll be paraphrasing some of it. Thank you so much for the music this morning. Thank you so much for the testimonies this morning. Terry, it's a lot of coordination, and I certainly appreciate you putting it all together. What a meaningful time we've had. The, uh, the young lady that we that we gave the flowers to and the flag and the Bible. We really need to pray for her. We need to pray for her. Um, I believe she's on the verge of a very good decision. So y'all know what I mean by that? So you just join me in prayer for her. Precious young lady who's been in in and out of our church now as long as I've been here. Abraham, this man, we followed him on his journeys over the last couple of months. Abraham was called of God to go to a place, and he didn't know where he was going, so he followed God's leadership, and he took everything that he had. He took his his wife, his servants, his estate, all his livestock, all of his goods, and he went. And he took his nephew Lot with him, along with all of Lot's estate. They went south, and then They ran out of food and water, and they diverted over to Egypt so they could have food and water, and it didn't go so well for Abraham there, and the Pharaoh made Abraham leave. But while they were in Egypt, Abraham and Lot both gained more things in their estates. They were good businessmen, and as they headed back toward Canaan land, they went separate ways because their servants quarreled, and Lot's servants and and his estate and Abraham's servants and his estate just couldn't get along there. The, the land was just not enough to care for them, so they went in separate ways. And then Lot got in some more trouble. He got taken captive, and Abraham came and uh, rescued Lot with an army of men. And then God met with Abraham uh, again, as he had done several times, to reiterate his covenant with Abraham and to reinforce it. Now, I want to share here for a few minutes about how the scripture turns toward Sodom, the place where Lot went to live. Sodom was a wicked, evil place, and God was about to destroy Sodom. There were three men that came. They were referenced as the Lord that came to see Abraham to tell him that a year from the day they visited, he would be a father. And Sarah would be a mother. Abraham had only seen God do good things. But from this passage of scripture, if we read between the lines, we see that Abraham reasoned that if God's mercy was so great that his judgment must also be equally as great. Abraham knew that the worst possible thing in the universe was the wrath of God. So you see by now Abraham's faith had grown to the point that he saw God in a newer, more mature way. We know that Lot had become a resident of this wicked city, Sodom, that had been captured and rescued. They had returned to their wicked ways. Look what the scripture says in verse 16 of Genesis chapter 18. When the men got up to leave, that that is the men who came to visit Abraham and tell him that he would be a father. They were simply referenced as the Lord. They looked down towards Sodom and Abraham walked with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said... Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, To Abraham, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin is so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. I want you to hear that Abraham pleaded for God's mercy regarding Sodom. 
Verse 22, the men turned away and went towards Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous and the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of 50 righteous people in it? Verse 25, far be it for you to do, from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, if I find 50 peop, righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham starts negotiating and got to thinking maybe there aren't 50. What if there are less than 50 righteous people, Lord? God lowers the number to 45. What if there are 40 righteous people? God lowered the number to 40. What if there are only 30? God lowered the number to 30. What about 20? What about 10? Verse 32. For the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. Abraham knew that the city was wicked. He had encountered their king earlier in chapter 14, and he had when he had rescued Lot from the enemies of Sodom, and the king tried to repay him. Uh, the king of Sodom said to Abram, before his name had been changed to Abraham, give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. That was his reward for rescuing the people. But Abram said to the king of Sodom with a raised hand, I have sworn an oath to the Lord God, most high creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread, or strap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abram rich. Abram knew that the king of Sodom was a disgusting individual. He knew that the people of Sodom were wicked. Yet he pled for them anyway. Do you hear that? So I wanted you to see that Abraham pleaded for God's mercy regarding Sodom. And second, may we plead for God's mercy like Abraham did. Genesis is the book of firsts. This is the first story of a person being burdened for another people group. We have this as a repeating thing throughout the Bible. There are too many to even name in just one message. But Jonah, the reluctant prophet, preached the message of repentance to the people of Nineveh. And as we know, the people repented and Jonah got mad. He wanted to see hell, fire, and damnation. He was wrong. He didn't think that they would repent. And he got mad when they did. In Luke chapter 19, Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem. You know, Jesus is going to return someday. The Bible is very clear about that. And a friend of mine uh, said something I had never thought about before. She said this, Since we know Jesus is going to return, it's inevitable, He's going to, let us ask God to delay the return of Christ so that more people can be saved. I had never heard it from that perspective before. I had never even thought about it from that perspective before. Lord, we know You're coming, but can You put it off so that my cousin can be saved? Lord, we know you are returning. Can you please put it off so that 50 more people could be saved? Lord, will you please delay your return so that 45 can be saved? Lord, would you please delay your return so that 30 could be saved? Lord, how about 20? How about 10? Lord, would you please delay your return? Would you please delay your wrath until all my family have heard the gospel? You know, we've never thought like that before, have we? We've just never thought like that before. We think, even so, come Lord Jesus. I wish Jesus would come right now. You know, let me tell you, when Jesus returned, that's it. That's it. Abraham knew the worst thing that could happen to any person would be to face the wrath of God. And instead of looking at that lost, decrepit, reprobate, degenerate world of Sodom and Gomorrah with the thought of they can just go to hell, he pleaded with God that God would spare them if there were only ten righteous people. How about we plead that God 
will spare people. How about we plead that God will give us the courage to share the gospel so that no one will die and go to a lost, dying hell and meet the wrath of God. Let me ask you this question. When was the last time you went to God and pleaded with him like Abraham did? When was the last time you said, God, please, please, please have a breakthrough with my family? God, please have a breakthrough in this situation with these people. Please, Lord, please, Lord. We see that each time Abraham negotiated and pleaded with God, God granted his request. May we just be as passionate as Abraham was for the souls of people. Let's bow our heads. Terry, if you'll come and lead us in our invitation hymn. Father, we come to you at this time thanking you that we've heard testimonies. Lord, not only have we heard testimonies, we've heard, we've heard uh, uh, songs, we have heard scriptures, we've heard your message preached this morning. We pray, Lord, that we would feel the burden that we should feel that we don't most of the time. And instead of us pointing the finger and saying, they can just go to hell. Lord, let us not think like that because we know the worst thing that can happen is for a person to face your wrath. May people come to repentance. May people be saved. May people trust Jesus as Lord and Savior. Lord, be with us during this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. We'll be waiting down front for any people who would like to repent and trust Jesus as Lord and Savior. Or maybe you want to pray for another reason. Terry, please lead us. I need thee every hour, most great.